And then four, as a result of the touching, the Jewish people are not roi, they're not capable of being able to be l'malim in teva, higher than nature, which is the essence of a Jew. This is what Hashem took Avraham and brought him above the stars, all to show him that even though you're not giving birth, and that was not just to Yitzchak, it was the concept of giving birth in general. The reason why you're struggling to give birth to your dreams, to give birth to faith, to give birth to anything it is that's good that you're looking for, is because your essence is not in the natural world. And as long as you're bound up with nature and you believe only in nature and divorced from Hashkacha Pratis, that Hashem is the cause of everything that takes place in your life, you can't give birth, Avraham. That's right. According to the stars, you can't. But <clears throat> you're not here. You're not from here. You're not from this world. You're from the world to come. You're from the mikveh. You're from the waters of Das which is above nature. And all who eat and drink, it needs to be kodesh. That's why it needs to be holy. That's why the food needs to be kosher. Because the primary way in which a person draws his das, his consciousness, comes from that which he eats and that which he drinks. And therefore, the essence of the blemish of wine comes specifically through touching. And basic touching is through the hands. Because the essential blemish of the mind, of consciousness, actually comes from the hands. Rabbi Nachman alludes to this in Lukut Maran as being because of the fact that the hands are most busy with the physical world, it's most prone to believing in nature as divorced from spirituality. And so when I use those seven hands that I'm busy with the physical world in, and that becomes the primary way I'm operating, I'm, so to speak, living through my hands instead of living through my mind, through consciousness, through faith. Then as a result of that, I twist everything around. And instead of being guided by um, Hashkacha Pratis, Instead of being guided by this higher consciousness that elevates me, makes me feel happy, makes me feel peace, makes me feel connected, instead I feel tired, I feel lack of energy, I feel anxious, I feel confused. Why? Because I have transformed and transmuted this consciousness which is really my birthright and I've given it up for Teva. I've given it up for a bowl of soup. And this is all alluded to by the fact that there are 28 prakim in the hands, meaning sections of the fingers. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. 14 times 2 is 28. There are 28 letters in the first pasuk in the Torah, in the first sentence in the Torah, which is the um, root of creative force. And therefore, the Force of creativity is within the hands, which is one of the secrets why Rabbi Nachman says when you come to pray, you should clap your hands. Because then you go back and you access that original primordial um, mechanism of creation. It brings you back to the place before the natural world is created. And now you have, so to speak, more room to operate, to change the things that are taking place in your life. Because they're not stagnant now within the natural world. You're accessing before it even all began through the clapping of the hands. But here what we're saying is that the hands can also be the source of negativity, just like the wine. Because you can use your hands to cover over spirituality by engaging primarily only in the physical world, either with pursuit of work, or pursuit of pleasure, or pursuit of food, or pursuit of drinks, as separate from some type of higher meaning or, 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 or higher reason in which you're doing that. Shem keneged chav chet at van shamal bereshit. The 28 letters of bereshit. V'yedei akum hem behefech mezeh. And the non-Jewish consciousness is the opposite of this first pasuk from the Torah. Because they believe in Teva, they believe in nature. They don't believe in Yesh, Ma'ayin, something from nothing. They only believe in something from something. And that's why the Pasuk says these are the hands of Esau. Because Esau represents this natural consciousness. And Yaakov represents this supernatural consciousness. And that's why when Yaakov came in, Yitzchak said, This feels like and, and looks like the hands of Esau. But it sounds like the voice of Yaakov, because the voice is something ephemeral. It's not something physical. 
It's something from above. However, the hands are as physical as it gets. And this is the error of nature. Because it makes the person think it's through my own efforts that things take place. And therefore, it's through a wine that's blemished. This only happens through those who do not believe in Hashem when they touch the wine physically with their hands because that's the source of the non-belief in the first place. It's the accentuation and the making uh, primal, the hands, over consciousness, over amuna. And this is all uh, creates the wine and, and turns it into nesech. This is the error that you're vulnerable to when you're engaged in the wisdom of nature. And when you divorce it from a higher spiritual guiding force, you fall asleep. And this is the concept of yayin nesech. It becomes sleepy wine. Like the Pasuk says in Yeshaya, that this wine of Hashem, it's nasach. And then what happens? There's a ruach tardema. There's a deep sleep that falls on that person. So it's literally an explicit pasuk. You see the conjunction of nasach, this term which is used for wine which is prohibited from you now because it was touched by a non-Jew or someone who's not shomer mitzvot. Why? Because it brings a ruach tardema. It literally puts you into a state of spiritual sleep. Zed ne'amar sham al chauzim kochavim hatoim b'marechet shemaim. This is said there in Yeshaya, speaking about um, those in the past who used to look up at the stars and try and predict the future. Because even if they were accurate about how they were able to utilize the natural world, and nowadays, I guess it would be analogous to scientists, that we consider this to be the end-all, be-all. Science, doctor, medicine, there's nothing else besides this. And if you think there's something else besides that, they think you're a nut job, right? <clears throat> However, because they only think that there is nature, that is all they get to experience. Because they're sleeping. And therefore, in the time of the redemption of Mitzrayim, what was really the redemption? It was a redemption of consciousness. We have from Mitzrayim, which comes from Metzar, which means constricted consciousness. We were sleeping. And then we were redeemed by Moshe Rabbeinu, the Tzadik Yisod Olam. The Nachal Novei Makor Chochma, who taught us that everything actually comes from Hashem, and that was the primary redemption. And then after we realized everything came from Hashem, now it's a mitzvah gedol to have four cups of wine and just get higher and higher and higher and higher. Why? Because you're coming first from a spiritual orientation that you know that everything comes from Hashem. So when you drink these four cups of wine, what happens? Then all of the wine is in the category of zacha naser rosh. It's the wine that makes you have a head, meaning it elevates your consciousness. It brings you from Yaakov to Yisrael. Because on Pesach, the essence of it, according to the Rizal, is that the consciousness has, a, has like a, a, a superpower download. And you get to see that everything comes from Hashem. And you see this with the Makot, because all of the plagues were higher and higher levels of Hashgacha. They were, we, were, we, were, we were very quickly, but also slowly, being primed to understand that there was nothing else besides Hashem. But we couldn't get it all in one shot. So in the beginning, the water turned to blood, right? Which was already like something crazy. And then it just got crazier and crazier and crazier and crazier until we left. But by Emmet, the whole truth is that everything is like that. It's all from Hashem like that. But we were sleeping because we were in Mitzrayim. And then on Pesach, we're able to elevate our consciousness through the wine itself. Whereas in the past, in Mitzrayim, the wine was putting us to sleep. And maybe this is the secret of why when the Jewish people touched water in Mitzrayim during the plagues, it was water for us. But for the Mitzrayim, it was wine or it was blood. Maybe it was blood because it was putting them to sleep. But it was water for us because it was waking us up. Because we had Moshe now. We had the tzaddik, and we could see be'emet the truth. 
כי השם יברך המשיך השגחה ושבר את הלילה והשינה. Because Hashem Yiparach, He drew providence by breaking nighttime. And this is the secret of Moshe Rabbeinu <clears throat> being told by Hashem, we are going to leave Mitzrayim. Kechatzot alayla, at chatzot alayla. Midnight, at the pitch of darkness. Anay yotze betoch Mitzrayim. I'm going to take you out from within Mitzrayim. Vazai yayim bifchinat yayin am sameach. And then the wine becomes happy wine. V'yachom l'da ber saper b'tzir Mitzrayim. Balayla ze. And then you're able to speak out the Haggadah, because the Haggadah comes from the word speech. But the Arizal teaches what was in exile in Mitzrayim. Speech was in exile, because we just said speech is only capable from a conscious person or from a conscious group of people. Speech comes from knowledge of Hashkacha Pratit. The more that a person is in tune with the fact that Hashem is the cause of everything, the more he's able to talk. So when we're able to do the Haggadah, the most important mitzvah of the entire Pesach, um, Chag, that all comes as a result of the four cups of wine. Because that four cups of wine came from this knowing that really Hashem runs the world. Now this wine elevates our consciousness. Now that our consciousness is elevated, we could speak out the truth. That everything was for the very best. That everything came from Hashem. That even though everything looked like it was locusator, it was not in order. It was craziness. It was tovu vohu. But now in retrospect, now that we have elevated our consciousness and we look back, we could see that there was nothing better than going down and coming out of Mitzrayim. And that all comes through wine. Dovev sifte yishanim. That it wakes up the sleep. V'zebechinat ein omrim shir ela alayayin. And that's why it says in the Sechit Brachot, that there is no song except through wine. Because Rabbi Nachman explains that just like um, joy is only from the future, it's only from the world to come, and we're drawing it into this world when we experience it, so too song does not come from this world. It only comes from the world, world to come. Sha'az yitar shir ba'ama. Because then a song is going to be aroused in the world. Like the Zohar says when it says, Az Yashir Moshe. Then Moshe sang. However, when it says, Then Moshe sang, it can also be read literally, Then Moshe will sing. And the sages learn from this that just like Moshe was the first redeemer, and he caused us to sing then, so too in the future, Moshe is going to be the final redeemer. And then he's going to sing. And this is the source for resurrection, Tachir Tameitim. It comes from Az Yashir Moshe, then Moshe will sing, but specifically sing, because singing is only in the future. Shalom Nomar, it doesn't say Shar, he sang, it says Ela Yashir, he will sing. Mikan Lati Lashir Lolamaba. From here, we see that in the future, song will be the primary aspect of the world to come. Because the essential song is drawn from the world to come. That's why Rabbi Nachman says when Mashiach comes, there's going to be a song sung by the whole world that's never been sung before. Az Yashir Moshe. Then Moshe is going to sing. Ki az yitar shir ba'alma. Because then song, true song is going to be aroused in the world. And from there is drawn all songs that are in this world. That it's aroused and it's singing on miracles. Because that's the essence of song. When a person is singing based on Hashgacha Pratit. When he knows that everything is coming from Hashem and that's the source of his song. That's real song. That's the song of the world to come. <coughs> that all the miracles that are taking place, that all through Hashem Barach, which is drawn from the concept of the providence that's only in the future, and it's drawing it down into this world. And then there is a nace, there is a miracle that takes place. And this is the concept of drawing song from the future world into this world. And this is the concept of all of the songs of miracles. And that's the reason why there is no song except through the medium of wine. Because once the wine, meaning nature, has been encompassed within Hashkacha Pratit, providence, 
das, knowledge of God. Then the wine becomes a source of joy. It becomes a source of song. Because the ultimate joy is not when we get rid of the natural world. The ultimate joy is when we uplift and elevate the natural world. The greatest joy is not when we get rid of the physical body. The greatest joy is when we elevate and make spiritual the physical body, which is the whole secret of the Beit HaMikdash, that Hashem says, make a Beit HaMikdash and I'm going to dwell in them. So all of the Chachamim, all the sages say, I don't understand. Is he making a building and he's dwelling in it or he's dwelling in us? So the answer is, we are the Beit HaMikdash in, in potential. When do we become a Beit HaMikdash? Not when we get rid of our bodies. But when we utilize our bodies to become attached to spirituality to the extent that spirituality, the or the light of Hashem is illuminating our goof, our body. It's illuminating our mundane activities. We're not getting rid of them. We're elevating them. And this is the whole Chiddush of Hasidus is all of the different tools and mechanisms for not just divorcing yourself from physicality, but actually uplifting and elevating all of the darkness in the world. The physical world. Then you draw hashkacha. It's the song of miracles. And you bring it down to this world. And therefore we have song only on wine. And this is the concept of the four cups of wine on Pesach. Keneged Arba Malchut. Because we know that each of those cups of wine is connected another exile that we had under a certain kingdom. Because now that we're drinking wine only after having elevated our consciousness to know that everything comes from Hashem, it's through that same exact wine that we were oppressed, we now use it to subdue the forces of negativity, all of the exiles, which even though they are for time epochs, I don't know how to say that, epochs, or E-P-O-C-H-S, you can look it up after. So <clears throat> each of these Takufas of time. They really were four different physical exiles. However, we know that these four exiles are corresponding to the four letters of Hashem's name, which is within every single person. Meaning that every essential part of you is in exile. And it's through these four cups of wine that we elevate from this place of exile after we connect to Moshe Rabbeinu and learn that everything comes from Hashem. And then we can use that very same wine that was oppressing us to actually uplift and elevate us and take us out of these four exiles. That their only and essential power is coming from belief in nature. And then all of a sudden, when we attach nature the body, the physical world, to the soul, to the Torah, to spirituality, to the world to come, to Hashem, then all of a sudden, through the wine itself, we reveal higher and higher levels of Dat. We leave behind exile more and more. And then all of the four exiles, both over the course of time and within the actual experience of the soul and the body and the person in this world, they're all nullified. And there's Geula, and there's redemption. The only difference is the letter Aleph. So tonight is Netzach, Shebe Netzach, and Sfirat Omer. I give everybody a blessing. If you see this today, or you see this video tomorrow, uh, when it's actually during Netzach, Shebe Netzach. So, Netzach is the gematria of Nachman. So if you have Netzach, Shebe Netzach, you have not Nachman of Nachman. And we know that Hod Sheba Hod, is the day in which we have Lagba Omer, Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai. And he was the one of the greatest sages of all time. He was the one who wrote the Zohar. And it's through the merit of the Zohar that the Geul is going to take place, the redemption is going to take place. However, Rabbi Nachman said, as he was walking towards Uman with his students, that even though there was a, um, an angel that descended to this world, which was referring to Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, and that's where we have been drawing all of our consciousness since the time that he passed away. But he said, now there's the Nachal Novei Mekor Chochma, which the first Roshe Tevo, the first four letters of this are Nachman. And he said that even this angel that descended from heaven, meaning Rabbi Shem Bar Yochai, is drawing his life force and wisdom from the Nachal Novei Mekor Chochma, from the Tzadik Yisod Olam, from Rabbi Nachman and Fega. So Bezrat Hashem, during Netzach, Shabbat Netzach, we should draw a tremendous illuminance and uh, lifting up of consciousness 
to help us to know that Be'emet in truth, even nature, is only a mitigated form of Ashkach Partit, and really there's nothing else besides Hashem. And then when you do that and you know that, then we're actually able to not just leave our problems behind, but the problems themselves actually become the source of the greatest joy, the highest level of consciousness, that we go from being Yaakov, the heel, to Yisrael, the Rosh, the head. Everybody have an amazing Netzach, Shabbat Netzach. We should see the Geulah soon in our days.